what we need right now is a source for great leads. And I found it. It is called Pipeline Pro Tools. So about 90 days ago, I booked a demo with them. And in that demo, we reverse engineered my business. We figured out how many leads we needed to get in order to get to the closings that we want. And they gave me a playbook to use in order to get that. So I've been using it for 90 days. We've gotten 12 qualified leads and about half of them are already under contract or closed, which is great. And it is right now my number one source for my best leads that I'm getting. I love this thing. I'm about to ramp up the number of leads um, that I get with them as well. So, and you might think it's expensive and it's not. So I was looking for something that's very inexpensive, like affordable to everyone, but also generating great leads. We don't want crap leads. So what you do in order to get this, because I called them and I wanted to partner with them because I was like, this is exactly what our audience has been looking for. So they set up something specific just for us, just for Fight Club listeners. So you would go to pipelineprotools.com slash fight club, and then you go to the demo and the demo will show you how many leads you need in order to get the number of closings that you want to get. And then they will give you the playbook that I'm using, my number one playbook for getting leads. And then you can use it too, and we can have happy closings. So go to pipelineprotools.com slash fight club, book and go to the demo and get all the leads. All right. Here with me today is Deb Cohen. Hey, Deb. Hey, Jen. How are you? Good. I'm glad you could be on today because- Thank you. We are going to talk about how you make social media fun, but let me do a quick introduction. So you are with Coldwell Banker and you serve um, Connecticut and Massachusetts, right? Yes. I'm licensed in Connecticut and Mass. Most of my business is in Connecticut in the Hartford area. Okay, nice. So I actually found you on Instagram and you have a really big following and I love your name on Instagram. So can you give us like a little bit of your backstory and kind of how, sure. so, how you make social media fun. Sure. So uh, my Instagram is called the front door project and I actually started it in 2014. I've been running it almost eight years. Wow. And but you've only been a realtor for a little over two years. Yeah. Okay. So um, it's just been kind of a starting the Instagram has just been an interesting segue into a career change. My background is in finance. I worked in finance um, for insurance companies for most of my professional career. And just for fun, I started this Instagram back in 2014. I was basically looking for a new hobby. My daughter was getting into social media. She was a teenager. I didn't know what it was. So I thought it would be a good way to learn. Right. And much, much to her dismay, I started my own Instagram account. (laughs) To creep on her. Yeah, exactly. And to figure out, you know, what's a hashtag. And I started taking photos of home exteriors, just homes that I thought had beautiful curb appeal or you were destined to be a realtor, I think. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So So you started doing that. And then what happened? Yeah. So started doing that, you know, continued on with my finance career, actually ended up as a result of my social media, doing some travel partnerships, some freelance writing, freelance photography, and so on. Just, you know, really kind of a fun hobby. And then um, in 2018, I believe it was, I, my company reorganized along with a bunch of other people. I lost my job. So I basically Mm. took some time to step back and think about you know, do I want to remain in finance in the insurance industry for the rest of my career? Right. The answer was no. no definitely <laughs> a hard pass. Right. So at that point, I got my real estate license and entered into the real estate industry January 2020, right before lockdown. Yay. And you know, part of the reason why I felt comfortable getting into real estate was because of my social media. I really believed that it would be a major component of my and my social media is a lot about homes already. So it was kind of a natural segue. Right. How did you, I mean, a lot of people are like nervous and you're on Instagram. So a lot of people, a lot of real estate agents, or at least the older ones are on Facebook. So mm-hmm. how, how do you, what's your advice for getting on Instagram? If you're, if people are like kind of nervous. Right. So, I mean, I think for one thing, 
you have to make your account public. A lot of people just want to keep their accounts private and you have to blend the personal and business. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have their personal Instagram where they'll post, you know, pictures of their family or their pets or their garden or what have you. And then they'll have their real estate Instagram where they post pictures of, you know, just just sold, just listed. listed. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And people often choose a real estate agent based on the connection that they think they might have with you as a person. Right. They they know you know real estate. They want to figure out if or at least they somebody... assume you know real estate. You know? True. Yeah. <laughs> right. Especially when you're in the beginning and you're like, you're you just, like, I'm you know, not fake it till you fake it till you make it. <laughs> right. Um, which is definitely kind of how I felt as I, I'm sure all new realtors do right in the beginning. You're just, you know, be acting super confident and hoping yeah. you don't make any big mistakes. Right. Um So, you know, I think having people just really put themselves out there and think about, you know, what about my life can I share to help show people what I'm about? Mm -hmm. And so for me, I share my photography, but on Instagram stories, I talk about projects I'm doing in my own house. I talk about my interest in historic preservation and older homes. I talk about my dogs. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, things like that, just right. to give people something to relate to. Yeah. But yours is like interesting. Cause most, a lot of people in real estate, like they will name their Instagram, like your, their name or the team name. And I wonder, because you started with your Instagram page before you became a real estate agent. So I'm wondering if you were to start over, do you think if you were a realtor first, do you think you would have named it your name? And do you think you, it would have been as big? I don't think I would have named it my name. I mean, I say that, but it's hard, you know, it's It's hard hard to know know. for sure. Right. But I don't think it would have become as big because, you know, people see realtor or real estate in your name and they're automatically like, oh, it's just a business. Right. And, you know, I want, I want people to follow me because I'm who I am, Mm -hmm. but I also happen to be a real estate agent. Right. Exactly. It's just one component of who I am. It's not, you know, the sole purpose behind what I'm doing on Instagram, Mm -hmm. you know, but I talk about real estate enough so that, you know, I'm sharing expertise, I'm sharing tips so that it hopefully when somebody thinks about buying or selling, they'll reach out to me. Well, yeah, you still have to like raise kind of your real estate flag. Do you have a sense of how many like posts should be real estate or business related versus personal or does it not matter or what are your thoughts? I don't think it matters. I mean, I think it's about testing different things out and I've, the way I've structured mine is a lot of my in-feed posts, I keep very similar to how they always were. It's just, you know, pretty homes, commentary about those, um, sometimes a little history about the house. Mm -hmm. Where I talk about real estate more is sort of behind the scenes, day to day, I'll talk in my stories. And then I, I decided to use reels really strictly for real estate. Okay. So I'm creating reels that are providing either um, real estate tips, you know, definitions, like what is this kind mm-hmm. of thing, mm-hmm. or sometimes throw in a little real estate humor where you're lip syncing one of those trend, you know, trending audios or yeah. what have you. Right. So that's how I've chosen to do it at this point. I was really nervous, honestly, when I first started. You're very organized about your social media. Mine's just like kind of a splatter room. Like, boop. well, I mean, I feel somewhat organized. It's still, I'm, you know, I'm not the type of person that, that has like a content calendar and I don't have anyone that manages my social media. So it is an obligation. So I think anybody right. that wants to use social media as a tool for their marketing has to commit the time to it. And mm-hmm. I do it every day. It doesn't have to be every day, but I think you need to pick a consistent cadence. Um, Exactly. And stick with it. So how, if we're talking about making social media fun and it's fun Mm -hmm. for you, but like, what are your tips for other people who are like, don't think it's going to be fun or they're nervous about it, or they've tried it once and nothing really happened. Or like, you know what I mean? Like, how do you make it fun? 
Yeah. I mean, I think you, you can't overthink it. Yeah. You have to be yourself, especially um, showing your face and putting yourself out on video. Mm-hmm. You can't re-record yourself 20 times and, you know, constantly analyze how you look and how you sound. Mm-hmm. People in the Instagram community really value authenticity. And, mm-hmm. you know, I see all these young girls, no makeup, the whole thing. And I'm always <laughs> like, oh, I don't know if I could do that. But, you know, there's all different degrees and you have to right. choose what you're comfortable with. But I also think that people don't really think about you all that much. They you know, really don't. Do. They really don't. They really don't. So I also think that if people are looking at you like, wow, I I wish I was bold enough to, you know, act silly on TikTok or whatever. Yeah, And I'd have had people say that to me like, oh, I wish I could do that. I think it's great. Um, I'm too nervous to do that. Mm -hmm. And just start small, you know, doing the reels. I'm certainly no expert. I mean, I'm not going to be a TikTok star. (laughs) Um, but I put enough out, you know, I put the effort in, I feel like I'm improving and learning new things as I go and just trying to have fun with it and not take myself too seriously. Right. But I like how you said too, it's like, be yourself, show your face, make it public, um, have personal and business. So like, what do you, what do you like? What do you enjoy? So like, if you're the type of person that's, I don't know, volunteers at like an animal shelter, like put stuff up about that. Right. Because that exactly. like draws the cuss, like it draws people to you that are like-minded. Right. Or, you know, whether it's wine, fitness, books, mm-hmm. or Food. just maybe being, you love the town that you live in, showcase the town that you live in, which obviously is also kind of a natural tie-in to real right. estate in terms of being a local expert. Right. So that could work. Like mm-hmm. I have a pretty good ROI on that. Right, um, right. Are you on Facebook too? I do have a Facebook presence, but I'm much less active there. What do you, you prefer know, about Instagram? Something I always think I should spend more time with that, but. <laughs> but what do you like? Why do you prefer Instagram? What do you like? I just, it? I don't know. I feel it's just so much more immediate mm-hmm. and, you know, I like interacting with people in my DMs. I get messages all the time, That's you awesome. know, and going back and forth and, um, you know, I just think like a lot of people, you're kind of, I'm kind of over Facebook, Yeah. but from a business perspective, I, I could stand to learn a few things about better marketing myself on Facebook. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think like, I think kind of to your point, it's like, if you're going to like focus on one thing, right. Mm-hmm. And especially if you're not doing it or you're not maximizing the benefit of, of the social media, just pick one and just right. do it. Right. Right. Yes. Don't spread yourself too thin. Don't Mm -hmm. try to be all things for all people. Pick the flat platform that you actually sincerely enjoy the most. Right. And go with that. Do that. Yeah. Good advice. I love it. Yeah. I feel like, you know, on Facebook, on my personal page, it's, it's more just my everyday contacts that I interact with. And, you know, I just have a much wider following on Instagram. Right. And just like have fun, right? It's supposed to be fun. It is supposed to be fun. It is. Um, and if you, yeah, take it too seriously or come on too strong, it's not going to feel authentic. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Well, Deb, if people have a referral for you, um, in Connecticut or in Massachusetts, or they have questions about this, what's the best way to get a hold of you? I'm assuming so Instagram. They certainly, yeah, they can certainly <laughs> follow me on Instagram at the Front Door Project and DM me through there. Um, my cell phone is 860-461-5930. So feel free to text or call. Awesome. Thanks for being on. All right. Thank you. Why do 85% of real estate agents get out of the business in less than three years? Well, the main factor is that these agents don't realize that they own their own business. So my coach, Coach John Kitchens, has put together a free clarity report for us. This is whether you want to earn 100000 this year or a million. This report will give you the clarity you need to thrive in your business and not be a statistic. Go to coachcodeclarity.com for your free clarity report outlining what your success looks like. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a podcast.